everybody, welcome to Adventures with Peps today. We are painting a Primaris Marine for Warhammer Wednesday. And we're kicking things off with a white prime and absolution green. And while we're doing this, I will start talking about the chapter that I'm painting. I have chosen today the Blades of Vengeance, nicely picked out by a viewer on the channel who goes by the name of Mark Ockwell. He chose the chapter, so we're going to blame him if this goes terribly wrong. <laughs> But it won't. That's why you're seeing this video. Let's be clear there. If you've got any suggestions for a chapter, make sure you drop a tree image down below along with a chapter that I should look at. I'm not guaranteeing I will paint it, but it worked for Mark, so it might work for you. So the blade... Let's start that again. I can't talk. The Blades of Vengeance is a loyalist space marine chapter comprised entirely of Primaris space marines created from the lineage of the mysterious Dark Angels and raised during the Ultima founding of CA-999-M41. The Blades of Vengeance were the first of the Primaris Marines created from the gene seed of Lionel Johnson. They exhibit not only the tenacious defense for which their, chapter, uh, their legion is famed, but also showed a talent for following up with brilliantly executed counterattacks. After their founding, the Blades of Vengeance would go on to aid Robert Gilliman during his Indominus Crusade, serving with distinction. They have thrown their full strength into the Crusade, liberating dozens of worlds and putting dozens more they deem beyond salvation to the sword. They do this in eagerness to root out the Fallen, seeing the Crusade as the means by which many of the traitors will be forced out into the open. Notable Campaigns War of Beasts. The Blades of Vengeance sent two full companies to defend the strategically vital world of Vigilus against the attacks of Xenomorphs. Uh, Xenomorphs. <laughs> wow. I'm going full alien on us. Uh, from attacks by Xenos and Chaos forces during the War of Beasts. They fought independently of other Imperial forces across the northern portions of the Hive Sprawl. Most of the Unforgiven chapters follow the Dark Angel's patterns of organisation, including having formations similar to the Deathwing and Ravenwing. While performing admirably, they have not garnered the recognition of their parent chapters Deathwing and Ravenwing companies. Ooh. Like the Dark Angel's, the Unforgiven successor chapters also have a clandestine group known as the Inner Circle, who possess the knowledge of the Fallen and tr of the true events of their legion. Now, they obviously have the Primaris armor, which we all know now. They have the Aquila or the Imperial logo in red on their chest. This guy doesn't actually have either of them. Uh, the chapter markers, markings and unit designations are in black. And then they have their logo on their knee. This happens to be a fifth, I want to say it's the uh, fifth uh, company. Hopefully I got that right. And then, yeah, the badge is just a stylized black badge with a f on a field of bone. And then there's a downward thrusting sword centered on the black shield. That's it. That's all you get. That is the chapter in its fullest. I really like this scheme. I'm very happy that Mark picked it. I quite enjoyed it. I haven't painted green this intensely in a while. So it's quite nice. It came out brighter. As we're painting, and uh, I'm looking at it as I was going along, I was a little bit worried. This is definitely coming out a lot brighter than I thought it would. It's kind of giving me salamander vibes. But we're going to run with it. I've started, so we've got to run with it. We'll let it dry fully, and then I'm going to work out how I'm going to fix it later. But for now, we're just getting everything covered in green. And with these last few swipes, I'm going to put it down and let it dry. It's it's definitely come out brighter than I thought it was going to. I don't know if it's the white prime. But as you can see here, especially on the dry areas now, he is looking bright. So we're going to have to work out how to darken this down. I took a few minutes while it was drying and decided Agrax Earthshade may be my saving grace here. It's rare that you'll see me using a wash because I'm always a bit paranoid that I'm going to reactivate it. Especially as I didn't let it fully dry. But 
I'm going to put this over with the hopes that it's going to darken that green down to a level that is going to look more like the picture. I'm a bit disappointed that the green didn't dry darker. I picked it purely based on the name. Absolution Green screams Dark Angels to me. But obviously <laughs> it did not go the way I wanted it to. So hopefully this wash will darken it down enough. I'm just going to work my way around. I'm trying to do nice steady brushes. I don't want to have to go over multiple areas more than once because it's going to reactivate the paint underneath, which I definitely don't want to happen. Realistically, I should have left this overnight to dry, but due to some time constraints with me going on holiday, I wanted to get this video recorded and done. So I think that wash worked. The only problem is I made a mess, so I'm just cleaning up everything. I grabbed the Corax white base paint, which is kind of more of a very light gray in my opinion. It's not like the Ceramite white. It's got a little bit of a, a grayness to it. And I watered it right down. This is probably going to take me two coats to go around, but I'm going to just clean up everything. I want to clean up the shoulder pads because obviously the wash went over it. Some green went on it. I was just being a bit sloppy. So I'm just going to clean it up with this and then I'll clean up the other shoulder pad as well. It's going to take one or two coats just to get a nice flat shade across this all. Also, probably going to use this on his knee pad to do the chapter markings. It's just a good time to get that done and hopefully if I get it done neatly enough we won't have to touch that knee pad at all which will make my life a lot easier. <laughs> With the white now all cleaned up I grab the hardened leather and I'm just going to work my way around picking out anything that I feel should be leather. Uh, got the gun pouch, we got the hand grip on his bolt gun we got the strap that's holding his bolt gun over his shoulder and I think there's maybe another pouch on the belt that I'm going to get done. But I'm just going to take my time. I maybe had a bit too much paint on my brush but I'm just going to feed it around the model. Try and be as neat as possible now that we've got the green somewhere I like it. And uh, yeah, we'll be able to jump forward actually. And having jumped forward we dive into the Grave Lord Grey, which by now you should all know I use instead of metallics. I'm going to work my way around the bolt gun, get the nozzle, get the magazine, get his telescopes. I'm also going to get the aerials on his helmet and his backpack. There's not a huge amount that I have to do in this color, just enough and they're in fiddly areas, which is the bit that I hate the most. So I'm going to try and be as neat as possible. This is probably the longest model I've painted in a while. Because of that green needing a wash, we're about 20 minutes in. That obviously doesn't include drying time. So I've probably put in 30 minutes so far on this model. And it's technically looking just like a green marine. Also went in and did his base. It was just the, uh, is it administratum? Concrete, I think they call it. Similar to the other putty that I use. It's just the GW one. I've got a part of it. And I thought I might as well use it up on these models. Start slapping it down whilst other layers are drying up. It gives me a chance to let those dry. And while I'm fiddling around with the telescopes and aerials, we can skip forward. With that all dry, and hopefully you've hit that like, subscribe, and all that good stuff by now. We grab the pallid bone to achieve the bone shoulder pads. Now, it's quite an iconic look on this model, having that bone effect. It's almost a nod to the Deathwing, I guess. Especially with the shield and the downward point and sword. I really like the scheme on this model. If I could find a better green to speed up the, uh, the green process, I'd happily paint up a whole squad of these. I really enjoyed painting it. It's surprising that paint and Space Marines are so enjoyable since I've kind of given up on the Space Marine Army, the Executioners. There will be more of them in the future, but right now I'm just enjoying picking out random chapters and painting them. 
So seriously, if you've got an idea for a chapter that you want to see painted up, drop the name below in the comments so I can see it, and I'll start making a list and I can randomly pick from that list and try and make a video out of it. There'll probably be a few disasters as always, but I reckon we can get a good little list going. I could have some fun painting some new chapters up. I have a shelf of randomly painted marines. Now this guy has a fiddly face plight, which in the the image I'm using to reference for this paint job, the face plates were all done in bone as well. So I'm just picking that out. Hopefully not messing it up anywhere. Gotta go in at some point and do the eye lenses red. That's gonna be a little bit of a pain. But I think that's a future me problem. Turns out that future me problem wasn't that far away. It was about 30 seconds into my future. So I grabbed the blood red. And as you can see, I'm working my way around the bolt gun. Don't want to mess up the uh, the gray that I've got drawn. I also pick out the grenade that I'd left on his belt. It was a bit of me that was going to do it green. And then I ultimately thought that's going to blend into his armor too much. So it's now red. I'm going to work my way around this bolt gun a little bit fiddly. I'm going to leave the hand grip for now. I'm not sure if I want it to be gray or a proper black, but we'll decide that in a minute. And I'm just going to try and be as neat as possible at this stage. I'm also going to do the pistol in red and his eye lenses. Now, if he had an Aquila on his chest, that would also be done in this red, but he does not. In the picture I reference, I think they, they did a slightly darker red than I'm doing. But I really enjoy Blood Red at the moment. I'm getting a kick out of using it. It's nice, it's bright, it's bold. It's perfect for a Space Marine bolt gun. And there we go. The red is pretty much finished. I think I've got the eye lenses in. I'm just going to maybe neaten it up a bit more. So fiddly, I hate doing eye lenses. Such a tiny thing. This is my second time going over it. I always get paranoid that if I go over it too much is when I'm going to mess up. But <laughs> I think we're okay. So I'm going to leave that to dry for a minute. And we're going to find the grim black, give that a shake. And that should probably be the last stage of the model. So Grim Black, I'm going to use this on any tubin he's got, whether it's in his armor plate, like the knee joints and elbow joints. Also going to use it at the hand grip on his gun. So I'm not doing anything special. I am literally just putting the Grim Black over the green. I'm not too worried if I reactivate the green. That probably will happen a little bit, but it's not going to happen too much. And it's mixing with black, so it's just going to look like a dark green if it does happen. And I think that's fine. His armor is ultimately green at the end of the day, so it's not going to look weird. And I think I'm good now. I'm good. We're going to take some glamour shots once this is all dried. And I hope you'll join me next week for the next model in 40k. It's either going to be... I don't actually know. I've got a lot of Space Marine models to paint. I've got some Necrons to get through. Uh, I think I've also got some Sisters of Battle. So we've got quite a wide choice of figures to paint. But yeah, if you've got a Space Marine chapter in mind, drop it in the comments below. Make sure I see it. And then I'll add it to the list of to be painted. But until next week, always cheers for watching. Have a great week and I'll catch you soon. Bye bye.